Hello! In today's video, I'm going to talk about how to stretch your food during tough times such as now. In other words, how to make it last longer and shop less. So, we all know what tough times are, and many of us are experiencing it now with an unstable job or no job, even with the current economy in high inflation. Times become tough when we don't have enough money for the essentials such as food and shelter. Though not everyone is experiencing tough times in this regard, many of us are. When money is difficult to come by and uncertain, ensuring we have the basic necessities are a must. Food is one area that is not a fixed expense. Prices are often fluctuating with food, and nowadays prices keep increasing. So how can you ensure you still have enough to eat without compromising quality and health? One answer is to search for deals, but an easier answer is to make the food you do purchase last longer so you don't have to grocery shop as much. What does it mean to stretch your food? I'll share 13 tips on how to do that specifically, but in short, stretching your food is finding ways to make it last longer, ideally without starving. Which technically, if you have food, you're not truly starving. But anyway, it means not consuming your food too quickly that you have to buy more in a few days. It's learning how to save money on quality food, which can be expensive by making it stay in your kitchen longer. So you can continue to eat well without increasing your food budget significantly. Okay, let's get to these 13 ways you can stretch your food during hard times. First, have fewer meals. In the West, it's common to have three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But is having three meals a day really necessary for everyone? Honestly, on average, I only have two meals a day, brunch and dinner. I know some who only have one meal a day. The number of meals you have a day will depend on the quality and content of your meals, lifestyle, nutritional and health needs, and so on. So there's no perfect number on how many meals one should have a day because it will be different for everyone. But the less meals you have a day, generally the better. Not only will it give your gastrointestinal system a break, but you'll save money on food. Try it out and see for yourself. If you're used to having the standard three meals a day, lower it to two, even one. But make sure your meals consist of nutrient-dense whole foods. Be honest about your hunger. If you try one meal a day but are truly hungry, consider incorporating whole food snacks like fruits or nuts. Or try two meals a day and see how you feel. You will likely be surprised that one or two meals a day with a few snacks is good enough for you. Second, reduce your meat intake. Meat is currently one of the most expensive foods to buy, especially if you're looking for quality meat such as grass-fed, range-free, organic, without antibiotics, and more. For many, meat is a big staple in their diets. They may have it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, even as a snack. But if you're not careful, meat can skyrocket your grocery bill. I know of Atlantic wild-caught salmon going for around $20 a pound right now. Nevertheless, I am not advocating to stop eating meat, but to reduce the amount you eat to make it last longer and save money. Start by portioning out your meat when you buy it, cutting it into smaller sizes and freezing it for later. Cube chicken and beef, divide salmon by the ounce, then put them in a freezer safe container. Fill your plates with bulkier whole foods like rice and beans so meat doesn't take center stage. And don't worry about not getting enough protein. There are hundreds of fruits, vegetables, grains, seeds, and legumes that are packed with protein. I'll link a video on this channel that shares the top whole food sources with high amounts of protein per serving. Third, freeze and pickle food. Freezing, canning, and pickling food have long been ways to preserve food in many cultures. Some cultures even salted their meats to preserve them when they couldn't be frozen. This is not to say that you should salt your meat to make it last longer, especially if you have a freezer, but you get the idea. By preserving your food, such as freezing and pickling them, they can last longer, certainly up to a year. The bonus is, you can get food at its peak freshness any time of the year. In the long run, you'll save money because you can buy them in bulk when in season and prep them to last all year long, buying less in other seasons. If you have extra storage space, such as a second freezer or pantry, you can stockpile your preserved foods to supply you for the year. Stretch your fresh food by freezing it for later use. Most fruits and vegetables can last up to a year if frozen properly, such as tightly packed in a durable container that won't let air in. Some produce you can freeze are bananas, berries, peaches, celery, tomatoes, spinach, and okra. If you're able or have an interest in learning, you can pickle or can food like peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, peaches, and pears. Freezing meat is the easiest way to preserve it, and dehydrating or fermenting dairy products are the best ways to preserve them. Fourth, be okay with leftovers. Leftovers don't seem all that appealing for many, but in order to stretch your food, you'll have to consider them. If you're only cooking for yourself or one other person, 
It may be easy to minimize leftovers, but if you're cooking for several others, leftovers are likely common. By agreeing to have leftovers the next day, whether for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you can save money and not using up your food resources too quickly. You can also save time and not having to prepare a new meal the next day. Preserve leftovers by having refrigerator or freezer safe containers to store them in. To avoid throwing out food already served on plates, fill up your plate with smaller portions. If you're still hungry after finishing your plate, you can always refill it. By not overfilling your plate, you won't have picked over leftovers that you'll want to throw away. Fifth, invest in bulk dry and canned goods. Dry and canned goods are the easiest and often cheapest foods to obtain and they can last for a long time, sometimes over a year. These foods are pasta, rice, flour, beans, seeds, nuts, and some vegetables and fruits. They're often sold in bulk, allowing you to save money and shop less. You can find dry and canned goods at the typical grocery store, but go to warehouse stores such as Sam's Club to get them in bulk. Online websites such as bulkfoods.com sells a lot of basic nuts, seeds, grains, spices, flowers, and other dried goods at great prices, even organic varieties. It's ideal to have space to store your bulk goods, so if you have a large pantry or another area to store them, you can buy enough to last for a year, allowing you to shop less. And a lot of these bulk dry and canned goods are filling, so a small serving goes a long way. You won't have to replace them constantly, thus saving you money. Six, eat smaller portions. Touched on earlier when discussing leftovers, portion out your meals to smaller amounts will allow you to stretch your food further. We often don't need to eat as much as we do. When we have a lot on our plate, it's easy to consume everything because for most of us, we are used to and sometimes conditioned to doing that. If you find that you need large portions in order to be full, consider what's on your plate. If it's not mostly whole foods, that may be the reason why you need a lot of food to feel full. An easy way to eat smaller portions is to use smaller bowls and plates. Using smaller dishware will limit your portion sizes. Go for smaller plates instead of a dinner plate or a child-sized bowl for your soup and cereal. Fill your plate with fill-in whole foods so you don't reach for seconds or a larger dish. Also consider sticking to the standard serving sizes. They tend to be smaller than what the average adult eats. Test out what portion size works for you with the aim of cutting it down. In doing so, you'll have more food in your kitchen at the end of the week, thus not having to do large expensive grocery trips or go to the grocery store often. Seven, stop snacking. I'm not necessarily referring to not eating between meals like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but consuming traditional snack foods such as chips, crackers, cookies, candy, and ice cream. Not only are these ultra processed and synthetic foods, but they trigger overeating and can get expensive due to overconsumption. For instance, the standard 14.5 ounce bag of Doritos today is around $5.50, but many can easily eat a bag in one to two days being triggered to go back to the store to buy more. If you're not careful, you can end up eating three bags in a week adding over $15 to your grocery bill, having received no benefit, just harmful chemicals that lack any nutrients. Getting back on topic, focus on consuming meals that are nutrient dense and packed with fill and whole foods. If you find that you truly are hungry in between meals, snack on natural nutrient dense foods such as fruits, vegetables, and nuts. You can even be creative and incorporate dips, frozen fruit, even fruit infused or sparkling water. Whole food snacking, if you choose to, does not have to be dull and boring. Eighth, invest in big pot recipes and simple meals. Big pot recipes such as chili, stews, soups, and casseroles don't have to require a lot of ingredients or complicated ingredients. Often they are simple and rooted in tradition, popular during times when a lot of food or different foods weren't easy to come by. Often, you can make these meals in large quantities, portion them out so they last several days. This will not only save you money and not having to use more food, to make additional meals, but time and not having to cook day in and day out. A lot of these meals also contain fill in whole foods or minimally processed foods like rice, pasta, and beans. If you don't have any recipes saved on your computer or book, scour the internet for highly reviewed recipes like chicken noodle soup, beef stew, lentil stew, or goulash. Start building a library of simple and big pot recipes to rely on. These recipes should require very few ingredients, five or less, and allow you to make a lot to enjoy for several days. Ninth, plan your meals. This is important because when you know what you'll eat throughout the week, you can control your grocery budget only buying items that are part of those meals. This includes taking inventory of what you already have in your kitchen. 
you may find that you don't have to buy as much because you already have items or similar items that will cover your planned meals. Also, planning your meals can help prevent food waste. If you see that you have fruits and vegetables that are about to go bad, you can incorporate them into your meals or avoid buying more of them until what you have is gone. All this will stretch your food and control your spending. So each week, write down what you'll have for your meals, including whole food snacks, if you choose to. Then review your pantry, cabinets, and refrigerator, jotting down the ingredients you already have and any items that are close to expiration. Even if you don't have the exact ingredients your meals call for, do you have something similar that will do? Such as using a can of black beans you already have instead of the pinto beans your burrito recipe calls for? Tenth, bulk up meals with beans and rice. Beans and rice have long been labeled as poor man's food, but with good reason. Beans and rice are fairly cheap, is available in bulk, and is extremely filling. A little goes a long way. Plus, they are highly versatile foods. They go well with just about any dish. Beans tend to have a lot of protein, so if you want to cut your meat consumption, they're a great alternative. You can even try mixing beans with meat, such as in a burrito meal you're creating. Rice goes well with any vegetable stir fry, especially if you need something filling but don't have a lot of vegetables on hand. In sum, beans and rice allow you to use a little to get a lot, which is a filling, satisfying meal that will keep you satiated until your next meal. I find that when I eat dishes that contain beans and rice, I don't snack in between meals. 11th, reinvent leftovers. The goal here is to avoid waste. If you really don't want to eat the same thing the next day, such as if you didn't enjoy your meal, it didn't turn out as you would have liked, or you just don't want to eat it again, give a new life. Create a new dish out of it. That bland or dried baked chicken can be transformed into a chicken tomato pasta dish the next day, or thrown into a garden vegetable soup. Even scraps such as fruit peels, meat bones, and vegetable shavings can be used to flavor water or make a flavorful broth. Even pantry items such as flour, that you plan for a specific recipe but change your mind can become rolls or biscuits for breakfast or dinner. Get creative with food and develop the mindset of seeing value in food in order to not waste as much of it. Even if you buy items you regret, make the most out of them. Use as much of the food as you can, then turn leftovers into something new. Not only will you not waste money by throwing food away, but you'll stretch your food further and save money and not having to buy food for meals your reinvented foods are covering. 12. Invest in quality food storage. Preserving food by freezing, canning, pickling, and dehydration is important to stretch your food further, but the container these foods are preserved in are just as important. As I'm trying to reduce my consumption of toxic materials, chemicals, and ingredients, I'm no longer a fan of plastic containers, whether they are wraps, bags, or boxes, but I realize it's not always easy to find a good replacement for certain items such as plastic wrap or plastic bags. So I'm suggesting to move away from plastic storage and towards less toxic storage, such as glass, paper, and even stainless steel. Plastics have been known to have toxic chemicals that can leach into foods such as BPAs, phylates, and PFAS. When storing food, go for glass containers. I recommend Bentgo. They have a good selection of glass containers that are also oven safe. Consider using paper sandwich and lunch bags to carry dry food when traveling if glass containers are not convenient, though there are travel glass containers. Also consider metal food containers such as stainless steel that work for traveling. Bentgo and Clean Canteen sell some. Thirteenth, cook with more water. You might think that adding more water to meals such as soups and stews will dilute them and make them bland, but that's not the case. It's all in how you season them. Generally, drinking more water will leave you feeling full, so adding more water to soups and stews can give you more broth to consume, giving you the same full feeling effect. This will allow you to use less costly ingredients like vegetables and meats without compromising how much you can make. By adding more water, you can have more soup or stew to carry over to several meals, leaving more money in your pocket because you don't have to keep buying food to make more meals. So add more water to recipes that call for it or liquid ingredients such as broth. Keep the flavor by seasoning soups and stews well. You'll find there's no difference in taste or flavor, just the price investment. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope I shared 13 valuable tips on how to stretch your food during hard times. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and share so others wanting to save money and stretch their food resources can discover this video. Subscribe for more whole food and nutrition videos, and until next time, take care.